Welcome to a topic video looking at an, an important aspect of monopoly power and asking the question, why are insulin prices so high, particularly in the United States? Well, it's been estimated that the marginal cost of manufacturing a vial, a single vial, the next vial of insulin ranges from around $3.70 up to $6. That's according to a 2018 study published in the Journal of the American Medical Association. So the marginal cost of a vial of insulin is pretty low, but the market price, the price that you pay as a consumer in the United States can vary depending on the type and brand of insulation, insulin, but of course critically the location uh, and the insurance coverage of the person purchasing it. By the way, in 2021, apparently more than 30 million people in the United States were without any health care coverage. And of course, that exposes them to unaffordable insulin, something that President Biden has just uh, intervened uh, regarding this in the United States. I'll come back to that at the end. According to the Health Care Cost Institute, whilst the marginal cost of insulin is pretty low, $3.70, let's say $4, the actual price in the United States increased from $344 10 years ago to $540 in 2019, an increase of 157%. And in some parts of the United States, the price is even higher than that. So there's a huge gap, a huge disconnect between the market price of insulin and the actual marginal cost of supply. If we think about the market share of the industry, according to a report by IQVIA, which is a healthcare data analytics company, in 2020, the market share of insulin in the United States was Eli Lilly, 46%, Novo Nordisk, 31%, and Sanofi, 23%. So in other words, this market, this industry, is as pure an oligopoly as you're likely to get. The three-firm concentration ratio is 100%. So this is a market dominated by... Uh, Eli Lilly, 46%. They are the major firm. They have monopoly or dominant firm status and two others. So what explains why insulin prices are too high or sorry, so high? Uh, you might get asked an exam question asking to show this using a cost and revenue diagram. So let's walk through this together. I'm going to assume that the demand for insulin is price inelastic. There are very, very few substitutes. It's an essential course of treatment for diabetics. And uh, I've drawn the demand curve is fairly inelastic. I haven't drawn it to the y-axis, but I've tried to show that demand is fairly price insensitive. I've put in some cost curves and uh, Q1 is the profit maximizing output where marginal cost meets marginal revenue. So if the drugs companies are profit maximizers, and of course that can be questioned as part of your evaluation, then they'll charge a single profit maximizing price of, uh, of P1. Uh, of course, they may not do that. They may price discriminate in different markets. They might charge a different price for the same product to different groups of consumers. That, of course, is one of the characteristics of oligopoly and firms with significant monopoly power. But let's assume that the profit maximizing price is the one that's charged, and that's price P1. Well, the average cost, the unit cost made up of the variable and the fixed costs, is AC1. And so you can see here that... The price exceeds the average cost, which means that the drugs manufacturer, Eli Lilly, for example, can make strong, large, super normal monopoly profits because of the low price elasticity of demand and also the relatively low cost of production. Now, the monopoly profit, by the way, in an exam, it's always better to label rather than shade. So the monopoly profit is the area P1, A, D, E. Profit per unit, A, D, multiplied by the output, Q1. But of course, that price is well above the marginal cost of supply. And in that sense, this is an allocatively efficient, inefficient market. Price P1 is way higher than the marginal cost, which is down at point C for output Q1. And if you have uh, inef allocative inefficiency, uh, the price uh, restricts demand. There is a deadweight welfare loss of area A, B, C. Point B is where marginal cost meets average revenue. That will be the allocatively efficient price. So if you get a question on this, draw a monopoly diagram with a low price elasticity of demand, show the profits and talk about welfare. You'll get high marks for analysis if you do so. So why are insulin prices so high, particularly in the United States? Well, I think one factor is the relative lack, lack of price regulation. In the United States, the market is, has a much greater role to play in determining drugs prices. And uh, insulin manufacturers, as we've seen, such as Eli Lilly, with significant monopoly power, they can charge much higher prices in the United States compared, for example, to the UK or Europe. 
Uh, there's also a very complex supply chain in bringing insulin to the market. So there are many different levels of uh, the industry. There's a vertical integration or vertical supply chain from uh, research to manufacturing to wholesaling and pharmacies. Because of that complex supply chain, each company, each supplier uh, will add their own profit markup to the, to the price that's eventually paid. And thirdly, patent protections in this industry are significant. They allow manufacturers of insulin to maintain a monopoly on the drug. And again, that long-run monopoly power, if the market has low contestability, allows them to continue to charge very high prices. And also, I think you've got to think about not just the marginal cost of the next unit, the next vial, but the very high cost of research and development. So the fixed costs of bringing a drug to market are very high. Clinical trials, testing, randomised control trials, trials to assess the efficacy of a drug, regulatory requirements you have to, you have to overcome. So the high fixed costs, of course, contribute to high average cost. And if drug manufacturers are applying a given markup on cost then that can cause the price to rise. Uh, in the European Union, prices are lower. One is that the European Union countries have government-regulated pricing for many prescription drugs, including insulin. Okay. Secondly, monopoly power. So the European Union typically negotiates drugs prices for a whole number of member countries as a block, and that gives it significant buying or bargaining power with the dominant pharmaceutical uh, companies. And thirdly, the patent laws in the United States are longer. They have this greater degree of exclusivity for branded drugs. That limits contestability and keeps prices high. Patent, level, patent um, length, patent maturity is shorter in the European Union. Now, some news. Uh, as we may be aware, that President Biden's administration has introduced, just recently, a legislated price cap of $35 a month on insulin products for uh, old people, senior patients on the government-funded healthcare scheme from, from uh, 2023 onwards. Uh, and Eli Lilly, the drugs maker, the 45% market share company, they have announced, by the way, in part, I think, a reflection of this, that they're cutting the price of their insulin uh, by 70%. And there's been significant political pressure for them to do that. It'll be interesting to see how the other <laughs> drugs manufacturers respond. There we go. Uh, hopefully a nice little bit of applied micro for you. Thank you for watching the short topic video on insulin prices. If it was helpful, please press the like button and consider subscribing to the channel so that you can get notification when new video content is uploaded onto Tutor2 YouTube channel. For now though, thanks for watching. Stay safe, stay happy, stay positive, stay curious. And most of all, see you sometime soon.